Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of justice, you done from the Father before all ages, and from Mary at the appointed time. Make us worthy to celebrate this day in honor of your pure Mother with spiritual hymns and to glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the Church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the exalted one who humbled himself and exalted the humble virgin. To God who became man and saved humanity. To the Most High who lowered himself and raised up the lowly. To the Good One be glory and honor on this day and all the days of our lives and forever. Have compassion upon us and heal the sick, help the poor, save the oppressed, grant rest to the faithful departed who have lost us and gone to you, and make us worthy of a safe and peaceful death, that we may raise glory to you, to your Father and your Holy Spirit forever.
carries all the world. shall be ashamed of me and of my words. Of him the Son of Man shall be ashamed when he comes in his majesty and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But truly I say to you, 
There are some standing here who will not taste the death till they see the kingdom of God. This is the truth, peace be with you. So the Blessed Virgin Mary is created in the image of the earthly paradise. So you're linking the reality of who the Blessed Virgin Mary is with the reality of this state that we call paradise. So we can actually stop and ask today, well, what is the real meaning behind this? And we talk about it further on in the prayer, it winds up saying that because of the adornment of your beauty and the riches that you receive, that the tree of life is planted in you. And all of it's actually very nice, and it's very beautiful, and then we just kind of move on. But what is the real theological understanding behind this idea that this woman is created in the image of the heavenly paradise, and that the heaven, that the earth, excuse me, of the earthly paradise, and the earthly paradise is created in the image of the heavenly paradise? It's touched upon by this aspect that the wisdom that comes from above is peace-giving. And peace, as we always wind up reminding of the, the definition of St. Augustine, that peace is what follows the tranquility. It's the tranquility of order. Now, when we say paradise so often, paradise for most people, when they, if they even speak of it in the modern world, is this kind of idea of just doing whatever you want. That's paradise. Run around naked and just eat what you want and do what you want. It's kind of this kind of very earthy, and very kind of barbaric way of looking at this. But paradise, the word paradise, is actually originally from a Persian word, Persian understanding. And if you've ever seen perhaps pictures of them or perhaps visited them, you know in the Mughal Empire and in Persia they had these gardens that were irrigated with channels of water that ran through them and fountains periodically and beds of flowers and fruit trees and flowering trees it's all very organized. Well, the word, the word paradesos in the Greek comes from Pasargarde in Persia. Pasargarde was a place where these gardens like this were planted of order and of harmony and of beauty and of fragrance. The emphasis being on order and harmony. And so, so impressive was this in the classical world that the very word itself for the place where these organized, ordered, harmonious gardens were became the word for garden. Paradesos actually just means garden. Aden, Eden, Aden means well watered, fruitful. And so it has this idea of life giving. So when you speak about the garden of Eden, we're talking about the place that is ordered, harmonious, fruitful, well-watered, organized, life-giving. That is what paradise is. That is the state of creation when God first establishes it. So it does link with the idea of the epistle of St. James that the wisdom that comes from above brings peace. And for those who receive this wisdom, they are not only receiving peace, but they become themselves peacemakers. And they sow peace. Peace always again being the harmony and the order. So when we wind up using, speaking of the Blessed Virgin Mary as being created in the image of the earthly paradise, it's a reminder to us of who this woman is in the restoration of mankind. 
of who she is, but it's also a reminder to us of what is the original intent of God is order and harmony and peace and well-orderedness. In the sense that what we have, when you see the fall, when you read of the fall in Genesis, the fall is precisely the opposite of all of this. The order and the harmony is the question of what is communication. And we've talked about this before, that the word communication, the very foundation of the word means coming together as one. Kum and then the unum. Communication has its fundamental root idea of bringing together. And this is an important thing for us to consider in the modern world. Because if one thing has really fallen apart in the last 30 years, especially the last 20 years, is communication. The ability to communicate requires peace, because it requires us actually to hear what is being said. On a supernatural level, we can't receive that wisdom from above if we're only centered on ourselves, our own ideas, our egoism. This is the reading of the letter of St. James. This is the third chapter, excuse me. <coughs> And in the third chapter, he's saying, you have a wisdom that comes from above. He says, on the contrary, what we consider to be wisdom is really just cunningness, being astute, getting what we want. And he says, this, this is not peace. This is devilish. This is self-centered. This is arrogant. And he says, what you're doing, the, the, the whole epistle is actually very intense like this the whole time of St. James. But he's actually saying that what God gives to us is that paradise. He gives us order. He gives us fruitfulness. He gives us harmony. And the ability is the exchange. So always come back to this idea that the whole path of salvation is reception and exchange. Reception, we receive from God our life, our existence, and His grace. He orders and He heals us. He brings light to our spirit. He brings peace to our hearts and our minds. And in that peace, we have the ability, even in living in a state after original sin, living in a state in which, receiving this peace, we have the ability to come together in one, even in the state of original sin. Now, in philosophy, there's a principle. Quid quid recipitor in modo recipientis recipitor. I know you know it already, so bear with me. It means whatever is received is received in the mode of the receiver. Okay. What does that mean? You wear pink sunglasses, everything's going to look pink. Whatever you receive is received in the mode of the receiver. You've known the people who, have, who are themselves selfish. And so they judge everyone to be selfish. They're suspicious of everyone because of that selfishness. Well, you, you know those people. Whatever is received is received in the mode of the receiver. Someone says something, they interpret it in the mode of being suspicious. The Blessed Virgin Mary has that order and the original paradise is an openness towards that peace which allows us to receive. So when we receive, when we live in the modern world, and the kind of destruction and chaos that is wreaked by social media. It is actually what it's doing. It's not causing these things. It's showing us a much deeper wound in us, which is the brokenness within our own hearts. Social media just means we speed up the communication. But within that speeding up communication, we receive things in the mode of the receiver. So all of this idea saying, oh, it's filled with hatred, and why is hatred arisen in all of this, and discord, and tribalism, and all of these things, it's true. Those are horrible things, but they're actually effects. Whatever is received is received in the mode of the receiver. It's telling us a lot about the human heart the last 25 years. It's telling us a lot about the structure of our families or the lack of structure in our families. It's exposing all of the things that are not ordered, that are not harmonious, that are not peaceable, that are not sowing peace, that are not making peacemakers. And so when we look at the Blessed Virgin Mary, she is the exemplification of a restoration of the human race. Remember that when Genesis speaks about the creation of mankind, when he, this, the, the creation of Adam, Adam, of course, you all know famously, is created from the soil, from the earth. 
But oftentimes we miss the detail is that God places Adom in the garden. He is set in the garden in this order of harmony that is the original intention of God. So when we look at the Blessed Virgin Mary, she is a mirror to us as to what we are actually supposed to be, in this case now, by the healing of grace. It's not an easy thing, but it's when we do our examination of conscience, when we look at ourselves each day in the evening, is that whatever is received in the, as received in the mode of the receiver is a very great lesson for us. Because as I've always said, to, when we go to confession and we say, I steal, I lie, I do these things, all right, fine, that just means I know the catechism. And I know those things are wrong. And that's a good start, but it's not really the purpose of confession. That's just a laundry list. The purpose of confession is to say, why? Why is it this heart that lies? Why is it this heart that steals? Why is it this heart that pursues whatever it may be? That becomes the key. And that's why to, to put the blame on social media, and I think social media is a horrific thing. I belong to none of it, and if you ever tried to call me on my cell phone, I never have it on me. Because it's not to be a chain for us, but a service that we use. If you use it in that way, it's perfectly fine. It's not neutral in that sense. I would say everything's neutral. It's not neutral. It is organized to make you an addict. It is organized, it is developed by psychologists in Silicon Valley to make you become addicted to it and spend hours on it. It is created that way. It is not a neutral technology. That's an important thing. And that's why I say, but what it's doing isn't so much that. I mean, you can call it evil, do whatever you want with it, but that's not really the problem. The problem was, it's what's in the human heart. And all of this fragmentation and violence in the streets and anger and hatred and just vi vileness and expression, it isn't even because you have to be anonymous. People put their names and still write vile things in comments. It's horrifying because it's revealing what is not paradise, which is not ordered, what is not harmonious, what is not at peace. And that's the real problem. And that's how it links with the sacrament of penance. Is the sacrament of penance is an illumination of grace that is given to us not to say, look at all the things you've done wrong. That's not the reason for penance. The reason for penance is saying, where is the root in this life for why these things happen? And so the Blessed Virgin Mary being created in the image of the earthly paradise is not just a poetic term. She's reflecting to us the reality of the original order and harmony that God desires for us to be in by His, by His grace. When we talk about grace, it's to bring this restoration. So on this day, as we begin now, this month of May, that we stop and we think of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of who this woman is. She's merely a creature. She's created from nothing. And yet, what a sublime creation she is. She is a restoration of paradise. She is the one in whom the Messiah comes, planting the tree life. He is the tree of life. And the fruit that he gives us is salvation and eternal life. And so we have recourse to the woman who is the peacemaker, the woman who is order, the woman who is fragrant and harmonious and fruitful and life-giving. Because it's a reminder to what each one of us also has to become. And the source of hope is that each one of us, by God's grace, is actually able to arrive there. You're going to arrive shortly in a world in which you're going to have little pockets of people who are desperately trying to hang on to the grace of the gospel, trying to live peacefully, at least among whatever little group they are among themselves, while the rest of the world sinks into more anger, and hatred, and opposition, and sensuality. Because that's where they find their satisfaction, because the heart itself, when it is distraught, needs a crutch, needs something else. And so sexual link-ups, grinder, all the rest of these things, they are only again a manifestation. Tinder, grinder, all of these places of just hookups are all exemplifications of the brokenness, not of 
the human heart in general, but of the individual heart that winds up being pulled into these things. And again, the things are not the main problem. You get rid of them, the human heart will still be wounded. And our key is as Christians and as desiring to be a disciple that our Lord says, what does it gain in the gospel today for a man to gain the world and in the end to lose himself and cast himself away? That's where we key when we come to paradise. That is the desire and what the Blessed Virgin Mary not only exemplifies, but what she is the source of, of saying that I too, she says to us, I too have been created purely from nothing. I am a creature created in God's image like all of you. And yet I have received the greater gifts, not because of me, but because of God's desire to show that harmony and that restoration. So during this month, pull out, if you haven't prayed it regularly, your rosary. Blow the dust off of your prayer book and pull out that litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary and take those few minutes each day to be able to stand before God and say, teach me. Give me this wisdom from above that brings peace and heal my heart so that I may continue along a path of life under the mantle of the Blessed Virgin Mary, under her protection of the restored paradise of order and of harmony and of fruitfulness and of life-givingness so that I too can be a vehicle of that order. And then you'll see how much easier it will actually be to hear what the others say and to be able to follow and to have. We will always have disagreements. But if our desire is to come together and properly communicate, it doesn't matter even about the greatest enemies that you might have. There is always going to be this commonality of what God has desired to create of us in the restored humanity of the gospel. And so may the Blessed Virgin Mary intercede for us. Bring us this peace. Bring us this restoration of heart. And bring us a great sense of calm to our lives. And then whatever we receive is received in the mode of the receiver. If our hearts are being healed, then everyone is being healed. Because it doesn't matter how broken you are when I talk to you. I know that grace is at work in you because I first know grace is at work within me. And so may her prayers intercede for us and bring us this great light and this great comfort as we move closer in the imitation of Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
receive these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Antoninus. Be mindful, O God, of the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Be mindful also of all those who share with us today in this offering. Life, 
that we may raise glory to you now and forever.
miraculous incarnation, your saving passion, your life-giving cross, and your life-giving death, your solemn burial, your joyous resurrection, your ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of the Father, and your second coming when you shall reward all people according to their deeds. O Lord, have compassion and pour out your mercy upon all of us, that we may enjoy the gifts of your heavenly church. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father's sake.
our souls with your truth and sanctify us by your holy gifts. May we dwell among us that we may be secure. May your peace live within our hearts, your faith abide in our consciences, and your cross be a true sign of protection for your church. May our tongues proclaim your truth and repeat your holy prayer, and our lips pour forth glorious thanks to you, that with you we dare to call the Father Abba, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
We thank you, O God, Father of great mercy, and we praise and glorify you for having made us worthy of your holy banquet and of sharing in your life-giving mysteries. We implore you, do not condemn us on that fearful day, but deliver us from all shame and disgrace, that we may join the assembly of your saints, so that with them and among them we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo and Amen. O Christ, the King of glory, we entrust our lives to you, knowing that you will take care of our needs. Help the elderly by your mighty power, restrain the young with your guidance, nurture children and instruct them in your divine teaching, and sign each one of us with your victorious cross. To you be glory with your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.